Out to center. This is Kranz. It's way back. It is gone. Welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today I have on Morgan McCullough, who is a utility infielder in the Seattle Mariners organization. Born and raised in the Seattle region, he is now back with the team that he grew up rooting for as a kid. And in this podcast, we talk through his journey up to this point so far, from high school to college, through the minor leagues, and a little insight into what his year is like so far in spring training. Thank you to Northwest Sports Management Group for helping set up this interview, and I hope you enjoy it. And gotta give a shout out to our sponsor in Black Label Supplements. They have a full line of third-party tested, athlete-approved supplements. I've been using their pre-workout before lifts, the aminos during, their creatine and whey protein after, their greens in the morning, and I've seen some great results so far. Make sure to visit blacklabelsupplements.com and use code COUCHGM for 15% off. Also make sure to check out the official lifestyle brand of baseball and baseballism. They have a partnership with your favorite player's favorite player and Ken Griffey Jr. They have a ton of cool hats and shirts. Also make sure to use code COUCHGM for 15% off. And of course, if you're thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, make sure to reach out to myself, the Couch GM, as I'm a mortgage lender during the day. Visit lenderconnorweb.com to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. And with that, let's get into the podcast. Today, I'm joined by Seattle Mariners minor league infield utility guy, Morgan McCullough. So first off, Morgan, appreciate you taking the time today. Yeah, thanks for being here. I'm happy to be here. So a Seattle native now back with the Seattle Mariners. I'm excited to kind of hear your story up to this point with um, the adversity that you faced. You know, I see that you played at the University of Oregon, Community College, and then Alabama, uh, drafted in the draft a couple times. So let's start back with your upbringing. And, you know, it looks like you were born and raised in Seattle. Let's start there. And how did you find that love for the game? Yeah, so born and raised in West Seattle, uh, which is like 10 minutes from the stadium. And then we grew up with season tickets. So like my whole okay. life, I just remember going to games. Uh, we sat like 11 rows behind home plate. So like I always had a good view of the game. It wasn't like we were like out in the outfield. Um, so I started picking up on like the little just intricacy, intricacies of the game. Um, and then at a young age, I got like uh, exposed to this baseball camp that like kind of everyone in Seattle went to. Like it was an infield camp. And like even if you weren't an infielder, people just went. And it was, uh, I mean, like 50 kids at a time and it would run all summer, all winter. And so, uh, yeah, I just found like the love for the game early on and uh, being around that environment where like there were always older kids at the camps. You're kind of like, you know, reaching and reaching. And uh, and from there, just kind of like took off. Yeah. So we're somewhat similar ages. I'm 30. You're 26. So that time frame that you were going to Mariners games was at the mid 2000s, I'd imagine. Yeah, for sure. I didn't miss from the day. So I was born in December uh December of 97 opening day the next opening day would have been like what April of of 98 so from that day until my freshman year of college I didn't miss an opening day so really yeah every year I would skip school that's amazing okay so you started out in the kingdom yeah I don't remember much of the kingdom but definitely like the early uh Safeco field days and then like just in the summertime like I we had two tickets so like I, I would bring a friend you know that was like a fun thing to just go do yeah, uh, that was kind of like our thing to do to hang out. Um, so yeah, we saw Felix's perfect game, which was incredible. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of good memories just going to Mariners games, running up and down the aisle. Like, you know, you get familiar with all the people who sit around. Yeah, that's awesome. So then then moving into, you know, your playing career, you uh, you're growing up playing baseball. You go to these camps that you mentioned. What, what were what was the progression that you had throughout? that upbringing and that time up until high school? Uh, I mean, I was always, I picked up like baseball skills really fast, those camps, you know, like my eye hand coordination got really good. Um, And then like when I got to, so I was always really skilled. It was just a matter of like size and strength, obviously. Um, And then when I got to high school, um, there was a senior at our school, his name was Sam Hellinger. He ended up playing at Gonzaga and played pro bowl. And so him and, Another guy who had went to our high school at West Seattle who was in Pro Bowl at the time, he kind of exposed us to, like, lifting. So that was, like, my freshman year was huge because every day after school, I'd just go work out. And, like, that obviously, like, taught me a lot of good habits um, and just put me at, way ahead of kids my age at the time. 
so now like I was mixing my baseball skills with strength and it was really started to like pick up so um that's where really, really where like I, I kind of took off and then uh you know played varsity that whole year we lost in the state championship so I got exposed to like what winning felt like a little bit and like high school baseball is where it starts to become like a little more like serious or important you know yeah um and then played summer ball and then after that summer freshman year is when I started getting like college offers and stuff and so it kind of just sped up at that point like once they once you start getting recruited it starts to go faster you know yeah um so but definitely getting exposed to like weightlifting at that age I don't know where I would have been without it because I would have had skill. It's just I wouldn't have been able to impact the ball at all or throw the ball, you know, with any type of velocity. Right. Yeah. So did did you play in different showcases and like perfect game and travel ball and all those different things throughout high school? Yeah. Um, so my dad passed away my freshman year of high school. And so he was the guy that kind of like took me to all the you know sporting events, stuff like that. So when that happened, I was like, dang, I, like, I know I want to go play in college. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do or how I'm supposed to get exposed. We're kind of, we're up in the Northwest. So like, yeah. it's not like we're playing year round. Um, and so uh, I got exposed to what was called like, um, not baseball Northwest, maybe team Northwest was the name of it. Um, and so I went and played a tournament in Arizona with them. And after I played that tournament, I got an offer from the university of Oregon and then from there, it just started picking up in terms of like, uh, yeah, I went to some perfect game stuff, stuff like that, but uh, just started like playing with players all around the country. And, you know, that's just a whole different, uh, that travel circuit's like a whole different universe. Once you get exposed to it, you know what I mean? You, your eyes open up to like how many players there are, you know, you're not just in this little pod of Seattle and now you're like Washington, then the region, and then you just keep getting bigger. Like, dang, like this is, you start being able to size yourself up a little bit. You know? Yeah, you go from the Pacific Northwest to seeing the best of the best from the entire country playing in the same spots. So I can yeah. imagine that would be pretty eye-opening. Yeah, and at a young age and being, like, competitive, that's, like, that's a fun feeling, you know what I mean? Because then you're just sizing yourself up, and you're like, okay, like, I kind of – I'm better than a lot of kids in this region. Now, like, am I better than a lot of kids, you know, in the country or however it may be? Yeah. You know, you just start, like not, – not that it's addictive, but it's, like, fun. You start being able to size yourself up a little bit. So I definitely yeah. found that competition um, at a young age. So in high school, it looks like you're, after your senior year, via perfect game, you're ranked the number one shortstop in Washington State in 2016, the number two overall player in Washington State. So walk me through the process of being recruited. Did you Do you know of any other like big name guys that you played with or played against in Seattle? Because I know Corpo Carroll came from there, Blake Snell. Those were different age, range, age ranges than, than you were in, but... Um, how, how was the competition in Seattle and, and moving into your senior year? The There's always talent in Seattle, I feel like. Um, like, I always think that Seattle has just as good of top-end talent as anywhere in the country. It's just the quantity of players is so much less. You know what I mean? Like, you mentioned, like, Blake Snell, uh, Corbin Carroll, Stuart, Stuart Fairchild, Austin Shenton, who's from Bellingham. Yeah. But him and I were the same age, so we, like, grew up playing summer ball together. Okay. So yeah, getting recruited, it was, I, I didn't know anything about it. Like I didn't have any relatives that played at a college level or anything like that. So, you know, and social media was like kind of on the come up then, but like now kids kind of get an idea of what it's like at a young age. Cause they, they can just watch a YouTube video of right. what it's like to be recruited, you know? Um, so yeah, I got, I started getting offers like after my freshman year of high school and then uh, I committed to Oregon uh, sophomore year, I think. And then I kind of like started getting more offers and I was like, man, like, I don't know, maybe I want to like explore more options, you know, and you're also 15, 16 years old. Like you don't really know what you want at that time, you know? Um, so I kept like kind of going around, took some more visits, this and that, uh, ended up going back. Like I recommitted to Oregon, uh, and then went to Oregon my freshman year, obviously, and just decided that like that wasn't the spot for me. Which, like, in hindsight, I, I probably knew that in the back of my head when I decommitted the first time, you know? But it's mm -hmm. sometimes you got to experience it to, like, realize. And in that situation, I was the only one who had to, like, you know, make the mistakes firsthand to learn. Yeah, so I guess let's get into that. Um, well, first off, you played in the West Coast League in Cowlitz, for the Cowlitz Bears. So I live a mile away from the Ridgefield Raptors. I don't think the Raptors 
Were the Raptors around at that time? No, I don't remember that team. I only played there for a couple weeks. I ended up like hurting my foot, and so I came home that summer. Okay, because yeah, there's uh-huh. teams all throughout the West Coast. It's great talent from you know D1 guys all throughout really the country that come and play. Yeah. Um. So you play there, and then you go to Oregon. Walk me through that experience. You know, the next year's Summer Bowl, and then you know playing at uh, Cotuit. Uh, Cotuit. I was Co-tuit. only I was only I was only there for a couple weeks though. Um, okay. So yeah, I played Summer Bowl after my freshman year or after my senior year of high school. And then I ended up hurting my foot. So I came home. I just wanted to be healthy to go into college. I go to Oregon and I just kind of like, I definitely enjoyed the school. I thought the school itself was really cool. I just wasn't in a good space, like mentally baseball wise. So when you're spending that much time at the field, you know, that starts to affect like all aspects of your life. Yeah. So I kind of made a decision towards the end of the year. Like, okay, this, this isn't really like where I want to be. I could either, transfer or I could stay here and then just wonder what it would have been like if I were to go somewhere else you know and I had after uh, my junior year summer I had lived in Florida and played for a Florida travel team at the time with Austin Shenton we had moved there lived with the coach for the summer this team called Florida Travel Bowl and uh, so I had a bunch of friends in the south like I had played for a team Marucci that was down based out of Louisiana like I had a ton of friends down there I was like man I want to go back down there and play like I just like the environment of the baseball down there. Um, and so I was like, well, if I'm going to go to a junior college, like I want to go to the best one. And this is obviously before there was a portal, you know? So like at this time in transferring, it was viewed as like, Oh, the player did something wrong. You know, like yeah. what is it? What is this guy doing that he didn't get in line with like what the program was or whatever it may be. And now you see the switch that it's made into collegiate athletics where it's all player empowerment, like players need to do what's best for them, which is, it's always been the truth. It's just some people haven't believed that. It's like free agency uh, in college, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like now, it's now it's definitely wild. But like when I was transferring, so you had to go to a junior college. So I went to uh, Chipola Junior College, which was the best decision like I ever could have made. Like that was where the most growth ha- most growth happened. Um, definitely like mentally maturity wise. Like we're in a tiny town in Mariana, Florida. And so I went there for a year and that was just like, that was, uh, that was a grind for sure. Like way different. You're going from university of Oregon where you have everything, you know, provided to you to this junior college where like you're raking the field before the game, like you're doing all these different things, but we ended up winning the national championship that year, which was super cool. I went to the university of Alabama the next year for a year. And then, like you said, got drafted by the angels, but Growing up in Seattle, I guess, around so many professional players at a young age, I always knew that, like, I was just more drawn to professional baseball than college baseball. Okay. You know, I was just more drawn to, like, I don't know. It's just that kind of how, like, I I just felt like I was, like, I had always – I knew college was, like, a stepping stone for me. But um, it wasn't like I ever grew up with, like, a diehard college that I wanted to go to, that I wanted yeah. to, like, play for. So that was really hard when you're getting recruited. And you're just like, man, like, all these schools are awesome. I don't really know what makes one school better than the other. Um, I didn't have one school where it's like, if they offer me, I'm going. So yeah. uh, it was definitely just like, tr- you just got to experience it and then decide uh, decide where you fit in. But, like, I, I definitely enjoyed my time at, at each stop. Like, there were things to learn from each place. And uh, that's just given me perspective as I've gone into like professional baseball for sure. I'd imagine it's not easy to become, you know, the starting shortstop or starting player at all for the University of Alabama. So were you excelling, you know, at that stop at Chipola to where they were recruiting you? What was that process like to be able to take that next step? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of, it was interesting, especially for me transferring because I had played almost every game at Oregon too. Yeah. So that was kind of like people, you know, why did you transfer? It was just like, well, this wasn't a healthy environment for me, like mentally. So I always had, I like the skill set was always there where I knew I could go back to a Division One and play. It was just a matter of like, okay, now I knew more so what I wanted out of a coach, like how I wanted to fit into a program. Uh, so Alabama was definitely player friendly, and like the standard that's out Alabama for all its athletes is just like you see it from the football side of things. Like it's just pure, like excellence. Like Mm -hmm. they treat their players professionally. Like you're given a lot of freedom, but that also comes with like, you are expected to get everything done, you know? So I, I guess I, I was a little more mature at that age because I had gone through different like schools now, been around the country 
And so I was very independent and in, like getting my work done. I knew what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be. And so, yeah, I mean, when I went to school there, I kind of knew, I knew I had the skill set to play every day. It was just like, where did I fit in? I ended up playing second base there, which I played okay. at Oregon and then shortstop at Chipola, which has probably been a good thing because I played all over the infield in professional baseball. So mm -hmm. just being able to like, you know, work at different spots is definitely continue to give me jobs in professional baseball. Yeah. So now, sure. then, you know, after Alabama, you dropped the 22nd round by the Los Angeles angels. So walk me through that draft experience that you, that you had. Uh, I mean, pretty low key. I didn't really know where I was going to get drafted. I knew I wanted to sign at that point, like day, what was that been day three? Yeah. I just got it. I woke up to a text and it was the angels. Like, would you sign for this? Yeah, I would. And so that, that was pretty much it. You know, you're just watching your name on the, on the screen. It's not like you get a call or anything like that. It just pops up and then you start, someone reaches out. And, and so it was pretty like, not, not kind of unemotional in a sense, because you're just watching your name pop up on a screen. Like, Oh, okay. I guess that's where I'm like going now, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that part of it was not like, it was like unpersonal in a way where it's just, you're, you're just watching a computer screen, you know, you're not getting a call right. or anything like that. So yeah. Then, so then that first year you, you get some exposure in rookie ball, you get up to a ball that first year. And then of course COVID happens. So walk me through your experience with first exposure to pro ball and then what you had to deal with in 2020. Yeah. First exposure to pro ball was, uh, again, like I had no one, I had those players that I had grown up like working out with and stuff like that. So I guess I had an idea of what it was like, but you never know until you get in it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that was right after, you know, you get drafted out of college and you go right there. So you're kind of like continuing the season, but you're playing a whole different game. Like, going from college to pro ball, like it's not the same in any way. The amount of freedom you have, the schedule, stuff like that, which is crazy because your whole life you've grown up with this like regimented schedule of like school, you know, baseball, homework, whatever it may be. And now it's just like purely baseball. Like that's it. That's all. It, you don't have to wake up at a certain time. You don't have to go to a study hall. So that was like a definite flip. It took me a while in my head to get that like wrapped around. Like this is all you have. This is all you're supposed to be doing, you know? So yeah, I played that summer and then, or yeah, played the rest of the summer, went into the off season, went to spring training, COVID happened like five days in, you know, no one knows what's going on. Yeah. So I went back home and then just, you know, kept getting longer and longer and longer. And then like May, call, May pops around. Um, I get a call that I was like released and I was like, huh? Like at that point, you don't, you, there's nothing you can say that's going to make them change their mind, you know? Yeah. So I, I just remember I was in the car and we were headed to the lake and I like got off the phone. I was like, well, uh, I guess I'm out of a job now. And that's, I mean, that's a whole different thing. Cause like you've worked your whole life to get to literally that point, And then it's just like over like that. Yeah. And you're like, man, like you, it's like the harsh reality of the business of professional baseball. Like it's not like a college where you get your pick of teams to go to, you know, it's like, if, no team wants you, then you don't get to play. Like, yeah, yeah there's other leagues and stuff. So uh, I took, I like kept training through the summer. Uh, I kept training through the winter. I just got to a point where I was like, man, like, what am I doing? Like, am I, am I just driving myself crazy to never, am I going to play again? Like, what is this? And like growing up, I was like, I'd never want to play indie ball, this and that. And then my agent, Nick had like, Talk to the Joe Calpha Pietro, who's the manager for the Kansas City Monarchs, called me. I was like, Hey, you're going to sign with this team. Like, this just, you're going to do it. And I was like, Okay, like, trust him. Yeah. So I signed, and that was like the best experience ever. Like, it's funny how, like, same thing at Chipola, like, you get put in these positions where you're like uncertain. And then at the end of it, you're like, Man, this is the best thing that ever could have happened to me. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have changed a thing. And it kind of like fits my story, even from college where like I kind of bounced around a little bit but you like gain these experiences and it just you gain a greater appreciation for like when you're out of place that you're uh, like truly happy you're like man like I wouldn't have been here if I didn't go through all of the little tribulations you know on the way here so uh yeah I go and play indie ball in 21 that was the best like we had Tear it a up. ton of yeah I had a really good year a ton of ex big leaguers um so I was like learning at a really I was learning not so much baseball wise, but just like my routine. You're learning like how to communicate in a clubhouse with like guys that are married that are 30. I'm 23 at the time. I was the youngest player on that team by like three years. I think the next youngest guy was like 26. So 
I go play that season. We win it. It was super fun. Went and played a little winter bowl in Mexico. And then I get picked up by the Royals. And then going, then you go from playing indie ball with these guys where the average age is like 29. And then you go back to high A where the average age is 22. And I was like, man, like, I, like, am I, I felt like old in a sense that I just spent the year with these people who are so much older and the conversations are so much different than yeah, <clears throat> like what's going on in a, in a high A locker room versus just this independent locker room that I had gone through. But uh, yeah, I mean, that definitely like was the best experience ever yeah yeah so you signed with the royals you uh end up playing in 2022 in high a and double a so yeah walk me through that experience of getting back to playing professional baseball you mentioned it's a much different experience than indie ball and how did that year progress uh yeah i mean affiliated baseball is much depending on where you're at i guess it's much more regimented than like independent baseball especially the monarchs like we're you just do whatever you needed to do. And that's that a little bit of the difference between affiliate and indie bowl is just indie bowl is all about winning. So like, there's no, there's no guy that has to play a certain amount of days, whatever it may be. And like, you understand that from the affiliated side of things, like the guys who get paid a significant amount of money, like, yeah, the team's going to see what their investment can do for an extended yeah. period of time. Like, that's just makes sense. So then you get back into, into affiliated bowl. And like, I knew where I stood. Like I was in, I was an independent baseball, like, free agent sign like I had to just kind of grind my way into into playing time and which is the same thing I had to do with the Monarchs you know when I went to uh, Indie Ball I learned how to catch it's like I caught a couple games and then like end up just someone got hurt and I played the rest of the year at shortstop so like as cut through it as it sounds like you just learn what it's like to have to like take one opportunity and that's basically like if you know if you don't seize that opportunity like you're your amount of opportunities after that are going to be limited, you know? And so I had that mentality when I went into affiliated baseball as far as like, okay, like every opportunity I get, I don't know if I'm going to get another one. This team has nothing invested in me, but I'm, 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 I'll be forever thankful that the Royals gave me that opportunity. Um, but yeah, I kind of caught my stride towards like the beginning of the summer there in high A and then finished the year in double A that year. And then last year started in double A and then finished in triple A, which, has been cool to kind of, you know, just progress throughout, throughout the levels. Um, yeah. So you make it up to triple a, what's it like playing in triple a compared to double a and high a and those lower levels? Uh, just the way I would say the biggest difference is just the way you're like treated. Like the hotels are a little nicer. Mm -hmm. The cities are a little nicer. Like just the little things that make like the little things that can have an effect on like the every day to day life. You know what I mean? Sometimes even in double A, like you're in towns where it's like, man, like there's really nothing to do until we play the game. Like yeah. there's no, the only thing across from your hotel is a waffle house. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's it. Uh, at least in, in the spots that I got to go to in triple A, like there were, you know, you're in a downtown area. So that was the biggest difference. Um, the competition level is, just as good as double a like you still the talent in affiliated baseball is so good nowadays that it's it's throughout every level uh, but yeah. just more so those little things outside the field that like can have a better effect on your overall like mental well-being you know right and then moving into this off season you end up signing with the mariners on a deal so what was that that entire process like uh it was a little it was different for me because i had never been like a uh I guess they had been a free agent before, but like uh, the Royals had signed me pretty quickly after my first year with them. So when I came back, I, I had a job the entire off season. This was more just like, you're going into it without a job. And I was just had like a, I guess you just have a blind faith that like, I'm going to get another job, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it, I just knew it was going to be a slow process. And like, I really wasn't, I guess all my previous experiences had like helped me into this off season where I wasn't like ever worried about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I had already told myself when I went and played independent baseball that, like, if this is the last season I play, like, I'm good with that, you know? So every season I play now, it's kind of like, it's just icing on the cake. Like, obviously, I still have higher aspirations for where I want to be in the game. But um, I think COVID and, like, getting released and everything just showed me that, like, okay, like, life's good without baseball, too. Like, I don't need it to, like, survive. You know, yeah. and so that type of like mental clarity into this offseason was just like, man, like I believe in myself. I think I deserve another 
year in affiliated baseball, like I think I earned myself another job. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, like if it's, if it doesn't come about, like, I know there's other options, like there's leagues in Mexico, there's leagues all around the world. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you get like, you want to use your skill set to, uh, like enhance your life in any way, whether you want to go like travel and play baseball, whether you're like money oriented, whatever it may be. But I just mean like there's opportunities outside of affiliated baseball. So there was never like a stress for me this off season. And then uh, as far as the Mariners, actually I called the independent scout that had signed me with Kansas city, Terry Wetzel, who like always kept in touch with me throughout my time with the Royals. <clears throat> and I called him and he was like, Hey, I'm with the Mariners. now. I think you'd be a really good fit here. I was like, that'd be amazing. <laughs> so my agent had talked to their pro scout a little bit and then he came out and saw me hit. And then the next day, like kind of had a contract done. And um, so once it, once it happened, it happened really fast again. Uh, it's just that waiting period of months of like, you're not hearing anything, you know? Yeah. But I just kind of took my mind off it. Like enjoyed the off season for what it was. I spent the off season in Arizona. So the weather was good. And yeah, I, I just obviously thankful to be with the Mariners now. It's definitely a full circle you know, full circle moment. Like you grow up, I got to see Ichiro hit in the cage the other day. And I was like, man, like I've watched this guy forever. Yeah. Like, crazy. So cool. yeah. Yeah. That'd be, have you seen Griffey down there yet? I haven't seen Griffey. Uh, and I met, I've been close with Dan Wilson for a couple of years now during COVID okay. during COVID. I met uh, Austin Nola. And so we worked with him for the off season and wow. he's really close with Dan Wilson. Okay. And so, uh, and his son, Eli is my age and I've played against Eli throughout high school. I had known Dan for a couple of years and then I've seen him at the facility a couple of times now too. But again, like full circle, like Dan helped me learn how to catch in 2020 when I was going to affiliated or going to independent baseball. And now like we're in the same complex and it's just like, man, this is crazy. Like, and then I'm also seeing his photo up on the wall. Like this guy's a Mariners Painted. legend, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So those type of relationships are just so cool. Yeah, so you're down in Arizona now with spring training with the Mariners. What's it? What's your day to day like? What are you working on this off season and moving into spring training? Do you know kind of what role they're going to be having you in moving forward? Uh, so right now we got like a little mini camp going. So the days are like similar ish to spring training days, maybe a little shorter until at least minor league camp starts up. Uh, as far as like a role, no, I mean I I always know that my like my value is like my versatility. Like I, I think you, I could play any spot on the field, like at a, you know, drop of a hat. So yeah. that's kind of like where I pride myself on. And then just like impacting the ball, getting on base. Uh, the Mariners are really big on like controlling the strike zone. So trying to um, learn some of the tools that they can provide to like help me in any way. And, and they are, they're really good at creating like player plans in terms of like, um, how, you, what you do well and what you can get better at and how they're going to like address those issues. So, um, from a player development standpoint, like I'm excited to keep working with, you know, all their staff has been, has been nothing but like welcoming in the first like week that I've been in. So it's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you, uh, enjoy doing off the field to, to relax and to de-stress and, you know, take your mind off of it or are you kind of always in it? No, I like to, uh, I, I got in, I mean, I've always been, I've always liked to cook, but we had a really nice kitchen this off season. I was living with, um, Forrest Whitley, who's with the Astros Yeah, and we, pl we played together in USA baseball in 2015. And so he got, he cooks a lot too. So like, I mean, a lot of it, we cooked quite a bit. Um, <laughs> and so that kind of, that was just enjoying like the outside here in Arizona. Like you could be outside all the time you know yeah. uh there's tons of like pools to go to like walks to go on stuff like that um but outside of training it was pretty much just hanging out cooking reading i mean you're doing so much physically that like sometimes i don't really want to do any more things that like are strenuous you know what i mean like right. i enjoy going to the gym and like i think it's good for like mental health but, like i was just at the gym for six hours so it's not like you know, when I'm, when I'm home, I'm just trying to like relax, really. Um, sure. Listen to music. Yeah. Not, not too much. You learn how to just kind of like decompress a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Do you have any, uh, series or, or movies that you've been into? Ooh, what, uh, it, we were watching the show scavengers rain on HBO this off season. That was kind of, that was kind of a weird show. We didn't end up finishing it, but it was like, 
way out there. I'm trying to think what else like what else I've been into. I like the Reacher's a good show on Amazon. I thought that was a good okay. one. And then we got into this YouTube series, Kill Tony. Have you ever heard of that? Oh my word, Kill Tony's amazing. Dude, we got into that. So like that was on every Monday. So like you know, when you're living <laughs> when you're living with a roommate, you have like the little like things that you guys like to do together or whatever. It was like every Monday night, like, all right, kill Tony's on. Like, all right, let's walk. Let's log in. Have you in. seen Casey Rocket, I imagine? Casey, Casey Rocket? Rocket? Yeah. No, if is that a show? No, so he was on Kill Tony initially. And now he's okay. like popped off. He's a psychopath basically on the stage. He's hilarious. But he's Casey he's coming up to Rocket. he's coming up to Portland in like a month from now and I'm gonna get tickets to that. Um yeah. Okay. You definitely gotta no, look at Casey Rocket. He was he he was like a bucket pole from back in the day or I think so, yeah. Okay. All and, right. And then yeah. he just gradually became a regular and now he's, you know, at the at the mothership with uh Rogan and all that stuff. Okay. Casey Rocket. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that name. He's got like William Montgomery and some of those guys that are like regulars on the show, but the you watch the show once and you're like, huh? And then you keep watching and like there are like little character arcs that like happen in the show and it's so <laughs> it's so funny. So yeah, we got that we got into that big time this off season. Yeah. Um, do you guys go to like comedy spots in Arizona? Have you been, have you been to the live stand? Did I? I haven't found one. Um, I know there's a spot in downtown. They do a thing like first Friday here every first Friday of the month. Okay. Um, but I definitely like, want to go. We were looking up. Have you seen the guy who does the Doctor Phil impressions? That's yeah, been he's on from, there. He's Adam, from Seattle. He, Adam he's Ray. From Seattle. Yeah, he's from, yeah. So we were trying. We were like, man, what if we just drove to like L.A. and saw him? Because okay. I think he's hilarious. Uh, but he's like sold out for ever yeah so, i forget the name of that spot because yeah there's that one spot in la that's like the, the go-to the, the comedy uh, club or... uh, the comedy store maybe yeah the comedy store uh, yeah yeah uh but no i haven't been one i've never been a live comedy in person so i would definitely want to go um yeah so yeah maybe i'll make that a priority during spring training to try and try and find one it's the same thing as like live music though sometimes they're like hard to find what you're into or what you want you know what i mean it, it can be hit or miss but then it's you know you go to see one you know, performer or uh, one band on stage, and then the opener is amazing. You didn't even know about them. It's the same type of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do that during during camp. That'd be fun. Cool. Um, and then I guess kind of moving into this year, you know, what are you looking forward to the most out of this year? You mentioned that, you know, you'd be okay with each year being your last year of playing. Um, I see that you are going to school for economics. So, you know, are you interested in business and maybe kind of your pursuits outside of baseball? Are there any things that you're interested in? I mean, yeah, so I ended up getting my degree at the during COVID, which I think it was in business. I think I stopped the economics. That got, that got pretty okay. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> uh, going into this year, I mean, I'm just excited to work with, like, the Mariners staff. They give their players a lot of empowerment, which is something that, like, I've kind of craved for a little bit now, you know. And then try to just like help impact whatever team I end up on in any way possible. You know, um, yeah. all the staff has been super welcoming. So, uh, you know, from organization to organization, like they value different things. So just trying to like, you know, control the strike zone and do the things, get better at the things that they value, you know, and that can like help improve my game. And then just, you know, being present like one day at a time because uh, it's a long season. So, really just i haven't even looked ahead that much to be honest kind of yeah. just taking it i kind of just take it one day one day at a time um and i guess from the from the standpoint of like each year potentially being my last that's more so just the mindset of like the same thing that i just said like i'm not i'm not trying to look ahead into years in advance like i don't know what i'm gonna be doing next year right like hopefully it's playing baseball but like i don't i haven't even thought about what i'm doing next week to be honest like yeah trying to trying to just Especially when the season's that long, like you start thinking ahead and it just starts like that'll just make things go way slower. And then it just starts to cause all types of like thoughts that happen when you're not like present to where you are. So it's the overthinking. Yeah, 100 percent. And then you just the longer you're in professional baseball, you start to just realize like what can I control? and What can't I control? Like I can't control what team they put me on or I can't control, you know, <clears throat> where I play every day, but I can control like how I go about my work and like how I treat other people and things like that. So those are the things I worry about more so than like 
you know, where I'm going to end up, how, how I'm going to play this and that, like those are future, future things. Yeah. And then any advice for, you know, kids that are in high school right now grinding to try to make the varsity team, or if they're already a standout, you know, what advice would you give to someone that's growing up, progressing and looking to take it to the next level? Uh, I guess from being in, you know, from playing in so many different spots and seeing so many different people's path to how they cross over, you know what I mean? The, the really only advice would be like, you're on your own path. You know what I mean? Like, I think especially with social media and like all the showcases and everything, like it's easy to want to compare yourself to like other people. Um, but like people's progressions are so much different. You know what I mean? Like you play with guys, I play with guys who played at like a D3, but they're, they're now just hitting like their ascent or like whatever it may be. Like everyone, everyone moves at a different pace. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh so it'd really just be like you know run your own race like there's no need to i'll play with guys now who didn't play varsity until like their junior or senior year or like they didn't get recruited or they went to like a junior college or whatever it may be like there's so many different stories of how guys find a way to like get to where they're at now so that would be my only advice is like just like be present to where you be present to like where you are like there's no need there's no need to be comparing yourself to other people. And that's the hardest thing to do in anything like is to not right. worry about what other people have going on. Like I have to constantly remind myself of that, you know, like out on the field, like, okay, it's, I can't, it's not about me being better than like someone else. It's just about like, am I better than I was yesterday? And am I like present to where I'm at? So that's, that'd be the only advice would be like, you're just, you're running a race against yourself, not against anyone else. That'd be the biggest thing. I think that's great advice. And yeah, it's, it's definitely hard not to compare yourself. You know, even myself growing my YouTube channel, it's like I put out a video and then trying to, trying to look back at yourself where you were a year ago or a day ago, as you mentioned, and not compare yourself to someone that's on a different path and has a, a different route to get where you're going. So, yeah. Yeah. At the same time, you've never seen like the bricks that they've been laying for years and years and years to get to where they're at. You, it's easy to just see someone else have it and you're like, dang, like they just got it so easily. Right. But they like the overnight run. success that took 10 years, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like you don't go back and see all the videos that they had that had like 50 views. You right. Know? For sure. Um, and even like the little thing like of watching Kill Tony, like we would go back and watch episodes from like years ago. And you look at like the production quality, like the little right. things. And you're like, man, like you see all you see now is what they're putting out, which is like a, like a banging show like they got yeah. a band everything but like back in the day like they didn't have any of that you know so it's the same for any endeavor whether it's like sports youtube whatever it may be like you're really running the race like against yourself so that's yeah. that's the biggest thing yeah definitely well morgan really appreciate your time it was a uh, good get to, getting to know you and your story a bit i'm looking forward to seeing you progress and for myself and all of us mariners fans hope to see you out there on the field and again thank you for your time yeah i appreciate that man go ems nice to meet you Go Mariners, yeah. Yeah. Out to center. This is great. It's way back. It is gone.